Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're going to be something really peculiar for this show, because last time, last time we did a deck guide, we did a deck guide about mages and the patience mechanic. Um, that was a pretty good deck at that point, but since the latest expansion pack, so the Harvest of Sorrow expansion pack, we all actually got some more support for mages and patients in particular. And that is exactly the reason why I'm going to go into Northern Realms again, because today, ladies and gentlemen, we will be going to Wizard School. So the Wizard School deck actually differs quite a bit from the Spellshock deck that we talked about a few weeks ago. The main difference is the new cards. We will be talking about those in a minute, but mainly the Alumni is one of the best bronze editions in the game that I've ever seen. Uh, we'll be talking about that in a minute in detail, but this card is what this deck is all about. And it changes the entire patience mechanic on its own. So uh, yeah, a very important card indeed for this archetype. So we're gonna go through each and every single card in this deck one by one. I'm quickly gonna show you the entire deck list so you kind of have another idea where we're going with this. But if you know what all these cards do, you can skip right ahead to the example matches using the timeline down below. The deck list will also be available on the Play Grant website and there's a link for that in the description of this video as well. So uh, if you want to go to the example matches, I'll see you guys there in a minute. Otherwise, let's head into the cards themselves. First up, we have the Aretusa students. So since this deck is called Wizard School, we will be seeing a lot of students and graduates of that particular wizard school. So the Aretusa student, just as before, four power, power for four provisions, has patience. Patience meaning that the value of the order ability raises at, uh, by one uh, at the end of every one of your turns. Uh, and of course, this order ability for the Aretusa student is when she's on the range show, you can boost an allied unit by her patience value. Likewise, for the next card, we have the Banard student. Four power, four provisions. It's basically the same ability, aside from the fact that you need to put him on the melee row and you damage an enemy unit by your patience value. Now, these two cards are basically the crux of this deck from the very beginning. Because what you want to do in round one is have one of each of these build up to at least four. We will be talking about why in a minute, but four is what you're aiming for. The higher the better, of course, but four is the minimum that you would want to achieve. Now we have the Aratusa Adept, a very good card as support for the patient's uh, archetype. Four power, four provisions, and boosts herself whenever an allied unit's patience is triggered. So boosts herself by one for each patient's uh, unit on the board at the end of the turn. Now we have one practice makes perfect, which is a spell. Spells are also important for the spell weavers, of course, because those are still in this deck. But you, it allows you to shuffle an allied bronze mage from the uh, board back into your deck and then play a random bronze mage from your deck to the field. You also boost this unit by the amount of patience unit you've played this game. So uh, usually this goes to at least five or six points that you will get in boost and the fact that you replay a bronze unit means that you could also have another alumni on the field again alumni are coming up really really soon then Dwim Viandra Dwim Viandra we haven't used her in a deck just yet but for four power and four provisions you can either set an allied scenario to the final chapter which is not something we're going to do but if you put it on the range row you refresh the order of an allied location the Harvest of Sorrow expansion added a very powerful location card to the Northern Realms faction, and that's exactly the one that we're going to be resetting when we can. And of course, the Centurion Spellweavers are still in this deck. Four power for five provisions on order. You damage a unit by one. You have one charge of this, and you gain a charge whenever you play a mage or a spell. So you get two charges when you play Rune Word. You get three charges if you play Tristelekinesis, and possibly even one more if you play Oneiromancy. So a lot of ways to add charges to this uh, fireball spewing mage. Now we have Casting Contest, another spell but very powerful where you boost an allied unit by 5 and if it is a bronze you reset its order ability and gain zeal. Um, very powerful on high students, very powerful on the alumni again. Then two also Thunders of course if you want to have some direct damage that you uh, couldn't build up with your mages just yet. You can just damage the unit by 5. It's also a spell so the Centurion Spellweaver will also gain another charge. 
And then there we have them, the alumni. So four power for six provisions. And I think I, it's pretty fair to say that this is one of the more powerful six provision cards that have ever been introduced. So on deploy, um, I'm going to actually skip that one first because the order and, the, and the, um, the two order abilities. So if you put them on the melee row, you will get damage for an enemy unit by a certain value. On the range row, boost an allied unit by a certain value. Those values are actually set to the highest value that either your Banner student for the melee damage have reached or your Artusa students for the ranged, the boosting uh, value have achieved. So that's why it's important that in round one, you get at least a Banner student to four and at least an Artusa student to four. Because if both values are equal or higher than four, you actually gain zeal and can use your order ability immediately. If you have either of them at something like 10, 11, 12, this card will always have that value immediately at your disposal. So 15, 14 points is definitely possible with this card for every single time you play it. You can reset it with casting contest. You can um, play it again with uh, practice makes perfect. So this card is hugely powerful. It also gets added to the pool of rune word. So rune word where you can create and play a bronze Northern realms mage and give it a shield can spawn alumni, which is just yeah, I think this makes Runeward one of the most powerful spells in the game, uh, bronze spells in the game, I should say. Because, uh, yeah, there's so much value possible from this single card. And there's also a few extra ways to now play Runeward in this deck. Then, of course, this meta has changed a lot. Um, so, because of the new additions to Skellige and Monsters, actually, as well, Xavier is very, very needed. So, Xavier Lemons, 6 power for 6 provisions, has zeal on his order abilities. And if you put him on the melee row, you banish a card from your opponent's graveyard. You can do that every turn. And if you put him on the range row, you banish a card from your own graveyard. But, of course, we're going to be mostly using this to banish cards from our opponent's graveyard, such as Ryogon, Melusine... Um, even um, Keltullus is a big target now because uh, there's a, a double Keltullus deck floating around here somewhere as well. But yeah, Banish is uh, unmissable here because you really, really need at least one Banish card if you want to survive in the current meta. Then Patience is still very important. So if you can double up on our Patience value, that is even better. So Leticia Charbonneau is still in this deck as well. Six power for seven provisions, has Patience. And on order, if she's on the ranged row, you can... Boost the patient value of your other units on the board by her patience value. So she starts at 1, so after 1 turn she's at 2, and so on and so forth. For example, if her patience value is 5 and you activate her, at the end of that turn, the patience value of your other students will increase by 5. So basically, depending on when you play her, you double up the patience values of your other units. Which could be very powerful, because for example, the, the, the goal, as I just stated, is to put our students at at least 4. If you put Leticia down, she has a bit of a higher base power, so a bit more survivability. If she survives for uh, 3 turns, then she has 4 on her own. If you then smack the other student that you were still requiring, she starts at, or he starts at zero, but if you use Leticia immediately, that card immediately gets to four and five, which is very, very good indeed, because that means that you don't have to wait five turns anymore if one of your students was uh, destroyed earlier on. And then, of course, Necromancy, you play a bronze unit from your graveyard and give it Doom just to see if we can try and resurrect one of our stronger patience units. We have Inspired Zeal as our leader ability, so we can give Zeal to three units in total. I'll mark them out for you in a minute which one you should be using this on. But uh, Necromancy can be used to either get one of those very high patience value units back on the board or replay an alumni, which is just as powerful. Then I think one of the best Northern Realm cards that have been introduced with this expansion as well. So Raffert's Vengeance, 5 power for 9 provisions. And this is the card that you need to use Inspired Zeal on. Because the Order ability allows you to play a Bronze unit from your hand and then draw a card. So you can just play another Mage from your hand immediately in the same turn if you use Inspired Zeal. This ability has a cooldown of 5 turns, so you can use that at least one more time if he survives or it survives, because it's a siege engine as well. And then it also has a crew ability that whenever you play a unit next to this card, you damage a random enemy unit by 2. So that unit needs to be at least either a soldier or a mage. 
mages contribute to this crew card's crew ability. So if it's flanked by mages, this card will also fire off two damage. Um, which is, yeah, almost all of our cards are mages, so that's definitely not a problem. Uh, it's more of a factor as to where you put this card. I usually put this card in the range row, because most of our abilities work better on the range row. So like the Aretuza student, the uh, Letitia Charbonneau, and then of course the Aretuza adept can also be put on the range row. And just smack your opponent with some extra damage. Then we have Shani. Shani, 5 power for 10 provisions, but allows you to summon a bronze human unit from your graveyard to this row and give it doomed, basically allowing you to resurrect another one of your students. This card has a cooldown of 7, so most of the time you won't be able to use this twice, since we don't have any cooldown reduction cards as um, such as Winch or um, Priscilla. So we're just going to be using this to revive one of our strongest patience units and then i talked about this in the previous deck guide as well tristelekinesis chills very very well with this archetype so we've put her in here right now so tristelekinesis allows you to create and play a bronze special card from either player's starting deck this technically allows you to play uh, three triggers for the Sintrian spell weavers. So Triss is a mage, so you can create Rune Word. Rune Word is a spell, can create another mage, so that's three triggers for all of your spell weavers. So definitely a strong addition to this deck, um, which just works very well with the archetype. Then Gaiard of El is also still in this deck, 7 power for 11 provisions, has a patience value of 4 to start with, and you can create and play a 4 provision spell. If you wait for two turns, you can also play Runeward with this card, but he has zeal, so if you're in a pickle, you can actually use his um, order ability immediately and play, um, I think Pact is a good one, so six provision, um, six power and doomed, or you can also play uh, Practice Makes Perfect again, which would allow you to replay another mage. So again, like Tristelekinesis, this allows you to trigger your spell weaver's tri uh, tries, yeah, tries is a word, tries is a word, so three times. Um, and just get a lot of value out of it. And then the location card that I was talking about, the legendary location card for Northern Realms from the Harvest of Sorrow expansion, Chapter of Wizards. I think this is the most costly location card that has been added so far, so 13 provisions. Of course, as always, the uh, location card has resilience, so stays on the board for one turn. And on deploy, you spawn and play Runeward. Again, we talked about it already. Runeward is very powerful in this deck. But on order, you also spawn and play... No, not play. You just spawn a base copy of the last played allied bronze mage in this row. So it needs to be in the same row. Um, but it remembers the last mage that was played there. Preferably, you want to have an alumni on this. Um, if you spawn an alumni like this, it will never, they will never get uh, zeal. So that's why the leader ability is good for that version of the card as well. You can reset this location card with Dwim Viandra and then play uh, summon another um, alumni on the field. So this is very, very powerful and you'll see that in action in a minute. Because that was the final part. The only thing that I need to show you is Onairomancy. That's the final card. Again, spell. Echo card that allows you to play any card from your deck and comes back into your deck afterwards. So you can do this twice. And it counts as a spell, so that's just really, really handy all around. And then our uh, stratagem is the engineering solution just to provide a little bit of protection for your first patience engine. So boost an allied unit by four and give it a very sturdy shield. And then the leader ability, we kind of talked about this already, but uh, Inspire Zeal, three charges for the order ability where you boost an allied Northern Realms unit by two and give it Zeal. So uh, yeah, as I said, we're going to be using this on the Rafford's Vengeance first and then on one or two alumni, preferably the ones that you spawn from the chapter of Wizards. And there we go, the Wizard School deck. Again, the link to this deck is in the description down below. Uh, but without further ado, let's head into an example match. And our first match is against Nilfgaard. Depends a bit on the amount of locks that are going around, if we are um, going to be struggling here or not. But uh, yeah, we do start out pretty good. We sadly don't have blue coins, so we don't get the extra shield. Um, so I'm going to try and get as many as possible as many patience engines as possible here we get Leticia as well and we get Rafford's Vengeance that is good that is actually pretty good because I can show you what my original first play always is because um, I kind of start out pretty similar if I can every single time so what I'm going to, going to do 
is play a spell weaver first, just as a little bit of bait. But if that is successful, I get three charges on the card immediately, because afterwards we will be playing Rafford's Vengeance. Put Inspired Zeal on top of that and play our first Patient Engines right next to that. Okay, never mind. Um, they already passed, so um, let's, <laughs> let's go into the next one. So next up are monsters. So that should be doable. Most of the time we actually have the benefit here. We actually start out with the exact same good hand that I wanted. Although we are missing... I'm gonna get rid of Practice Makes Perfect. Practice Makes Perfect, Perfect is useless at the beginning. We got double alumni. I need a student. I need a Banard student. We got the Artusa student here, but I really need a Banard student as well. Um, I'm gonna get rid of Casting Contest and we get Xavier Lemons, which is also pretty good. I can definitely get rid of Keltullus that way, because although it might not be a Keltullus deck, this is just... Yeah, this is Relic, so might be able to uh, just work around that. So 10 points, Self Eater. Fair enough. Um, let's start with the Centurion Spellweaver. Centurion Spellweaver will be very handy in a minute, because that will allow us to blast the remaining Self Eaters there, because the next one is going to only be 3 power. So we will be able to stop that in its tracks immediately. Because uh, we will be getting three charges. Because what we're going to do is put Rafford's Vengeance down right next to the Centurion Spellweaver. Triggering it once. Then use Inspired Zeal on Rafford's Vengeance. And play the Aretuza Student in the back row. Giving us another card as well. And that actually hit the, um, the Self Eater there. Which is exactly what we wanted. There we go, let's just leave it at that. And next up, we also got the card that we want, Letitia Charbonneau is going to be hitting the uh, the back of the row there. We get Gonkian for another 9, well, a lot of points, a lot of points. So, first up, Letitia Charbonneau, yes, Charbonneau, and I like to just use that R very hard there. We get the, um, the Self Eater down there, and we can just destroy that second Self Eater there as well. So now we're basically set up really, really well for uh, Patience Engine-wise. We're going to be using the Rune Word that we have and then Trist Telekinesis most likely as well. Um, unless we really want to go into Xavier Lemons already. But I don't think so. We're going to just be stacking that back row. If I can get a Banard student on the melee row as well with Rune Word, that would be extremely nice. And then we get Bloody Mistress immediately. Okay, they don't have Sabbath yet. So, I can actually take that out. I can. I can definitely take that out. So, Tristelekinesis in the back next to Rafford's Fensions. If we're lucky, we're not lucky. Um, I was hoping for, you know, um, yeah, also Stunder, but that's not going to be working now. We do get Runeward into another Centrion Spellweaver. I can put that in the back here as well, and then we get... Three charges, but that's not enough at the moment. So we're going to have to leave Gurney Koya alive there. But I can kill her in the next uh, bit. Play the heist unit from your... Ooh. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to have to be blasting away for real. Um, let's play a rune word. That's going to give us enough charges. I think that's five and three. So yeah, let's see what rune word gives us. And finally, we get a bad art student. I'm going to put him over here. That gives us 8 damage ticks on the Centurion Spellweaver. So I am going to just blast the Gurney Cora here. There we go. And then just blast one of the Gurney Cora's fruits as well. And that should be it for now. And then I'm actually thinking about... Ooh. Is that already... No. Okay, that's good. That was actually really st stupid. I think. Let's play the chapter of wizards now, um, and then we can play rune words. On top of that, we get another Banard student. Yeah, I'm just going to put him down here. Um, doesn't really matter. I can just destroy Yaga and the Gurnikura's fruit now, and we'll see if I need any of the other charge. I'm going to hit it once just to get the uh, she who knows down. Um, do I press Letitia already? I think I'm going to hold off. We're pretty high up already. But in a minute, I'll be able to use Rafford's Vengeance again, although I might not want to. We get a, the Witch Apprentice, which is now in 
Sabbath. I can use Alzu's Thunder. Yeah, I'm gonna use Alzu's Thunder. That's gonna give us an extra charge on the Centurion Spellweaver. And we can just keep uh, damaging. I could use Reference Vengeance again, but I think it's just better if I just stay low enough. Um, Leticia is five now, so that means we get... Hmm. I'm gonna trigger Leticia now. Yeah, I'm gonna trigger Leticia now and just see what we can get. Because that means I can actually use one of the Banard students to kill, yeah, she who knows. And she who knows now does not have Sabbath anymore, because that's only 21 and 15. So I do actually win this round with advantage here. And I'm gonna push. I am gonna push. And I'm gonna start out with Xavier Lemons and try to get rid of a few cards there. Ooh, that's not the best hand. I don't need the Aratusa Adept anymore. I don't, ooh, I don't need either of these students. I mean, I suppose the Banard student can go. Um, although getting a little bit of damage isn't that bad. And we get Dwembiandra, which is actually pretty good. So we have, as you can see on the alumni, we have the 8 damage and 11 boosts. So <laughs> this is going to be mad. I'm just going to push. So let's put the Banard student down on the melee row. And do it like this. And now we basically can destroy anything that our opponent plays. I should have also played um, Xavier Lemons first, because if they now play, um, what's its what's its thing, the uh, Witch's Sabbath, then they can get uh, She Who Knows back. What is in that graveyard right now? So they have Gurney Korra. Oh, they won't get Gurney Korra, by the way. They will get She Who Knows, Gankian, and that one Self Eater. That's just Banish, okay. That's fine, I don't have any Resurrections in hand. So I'm gonna just play Xavier Lemons now. And start banishing she who knows. Although I do need to be careful that I don't get Gurney Korra in here accidentally. But she who knows goes. She who knows goes. And then it's going to be very, very tight. But we should be able to win this. Because I can play the Spell Spellweaver first. Then the alumni get a second alumni off with the Chapter of Wizards. Um, then put Dwim Viandra on the back, resetting the location card, and then another alumni in the back. So, we are pretty good right now. There's Witch's Sabbath now. Um, we actually get Raffred's Vengeance back. That is so huge. I'm gonna just click Xavier to get rid of Gurney Korra there, and, um, oh, this is so good. So now we can actually play Raffred's Vengeance. Play the Centrion Spellweaver, and we get another Banard student out of that. So let's do this. Um, and I can put another Banard student over here. Because uh, it doesn't really matter at this point. Um, so yeah, let's put him down over there. And that already gives us a little bit more points than our opponent. The only thing, of course, is there are now two self-eaters on that row um, that I can't immediately destroy. Because uh, right now our Banard student, this is one is at 9. And by the way, this patience value will still increase. Even though he's on the range row, his patience value is increasing. So the alumni is now 9 points of damage. Which is, which is exactly what we're going to be trying and hit in a minute. So that is the Witch's Sabbath, the, the Witch's Apprentice there. Um, so I'm going to play Alumni is now 9 damage. So Alumni on the Witch Apprentice. I'm going to use the Chapter of Wizards and zeal that Alumni. There we go. That's another 9. And we can just hit... I can just hit the self eater right now. That's going to be more points. Um, hit Xavier Lemons, uh, get rid of the Witch Apprentice. I don't have a high enough student just yet, although I do actually. I don't really care about these ones getting higher, so I'm just going to hit that Self Eater and that Self Eater, and that's basically going to be it for now. But as you, as you can see, we're just spiraling out of, out of control. Those alumni alone did about 20 points of, 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 yeah, just 20 points. And then, of course, a lot of damage as, as well, because we just took out some of the highest powered units of, of our opponent. But anything they will play now is just going to die. Um, so now we can actually just reset 
the uh, location with Vim. Ah, I should have put that right. Wait, can I cancel? Yeah. So you need to put that right next to uh, Rafid's Vengeance for some extra damage. We can reset the chapter of Wizards. It's two more damage going over there. We reset that. We play that again. Oh, wait. That's not correct. Spawn a base copy of the last played allied bronze mage on this row. That's not correct. That's not on this row. Okay, that, that doesn't make any sense, but uh, never mind, never mind. Let's use uh, Xavier Lemons as well, get rid of Yaga, and that is that. And then the final, because we're going to win regardless, but that was not what the card says it does. Gonna have to report that. Uh, so yeah, next up is going to be the Ban Art Student on the Self Eater. Gonna hit that Self Eater twice, and then of course we're going to be using... I could do 11 damage, but this is just going to be more fun. So 11 boosts, that's another 2 damage, and we can boost whatever we want. They're all 4 points right now, so we can just boost by 11. Uh, we don't need another zeal here anywhere, so just put those 2 points over there. And get rid of the Witch's Sabbath, because I want to banish that card. There we go. And that's about it. That's going to do it for this match, because our opponent is not going to be able to yeah, get over that. There we go. And that's the power of the wizard school. Basically the power of the alumni. The uh, chapter of wizards kind of fucked me over there, but there we go. 2-0 against monster relics, where I, I wouldn't have expected that in the previous meta. <laughs> Let's do another one. And there we go. Next up we get another monsters, but this time a bit more aggressive. So we might be struggling a bit more against this. White Frost is actually pretty powerful, um, but we do still have a pretty good starting hand. We might be able to take out a few units on top of that. With also Stunder. I don't need Resurrections just yet, so... I actually get... We don't have any students. As a start, that is a bit of a problem. We get an Aretuza Adepts, and we can get rid of one of the Spell Weavers, and we get... Okay. Okay. So for once, I'm actually going to put Raffid's Vengeance on the front row. Interesting, but yeah... Our opponent has a lot of tools to try and take our units out. So hopefully, that's going to work out for us. We, co we can't really do anything against that dominance unit right now. So that's just going to stay there. Let's put a Spellweaver on the board first. And then again, we're going to be using Raffid's Vengeance to our benefit. But again, we didn't start at blue coin. So that is a disadvantage with this deck. That extra shield really helps out. Um, although I don't really change my initial play, so I do the Spellweaver first without a shield, then Raffid's Vengeance, and then we immediately also play the uh, Banard Student. So that's just gonna hit the Sintrian Spellweaver, but again, we can use Raffid's Vengeance, that's gonna take the Frost, and then use Inspired Heal on top of that, and play the Banard Student right next to it, and we get actually get a resurrection from that. We can actually take out the Nagelfar's crew now uh, and actually just hit the Wild Hunt Hounds because I don't have... Yeah, that Spellweaver is really weak right now, so it might actually just die in one go. So next up, we do have Oneromancy. So I might actually try to get Oneromancy into Triss, into Runeward, into something else. If we can get, because we really need an Artusa student, it's just as simple as that. Because right now our Banard student is only one. So one is definitely not enough. But yeah, we need to get them at four at least. But yeah, we're going to be moved over there. Interesting. So that means that Raffords Vengeance is not going to trigger anything else. It's probably going to die. Um, I could put the Aretusa Adept on the front row. Although my plan was on Aeromancy, right? Yeah. So let's do on Aeromancy and to Tristalakinesis. Just telekinesis into rune word. No, okay. Um, casting contest is actually pretty good right now. So I can reset the order ability, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to boost it. Um, and then I can keep it like that. I have three charges on the Sentry and Spellweaver now. I should probably use them. I should probably use them. Yeah, I should probably. I should, I'm just going to use them. Um, yeah, one, two, three on the Nagelfar screw. We just can't kill it. But that's basically it. Patience of the Banard student is still going, so we're at two right now. We need to have at least four. I'm, I'm just repeating that just for myself, basically. So that's moving the Sintrian Spellweaver. Fair enough. 
I am gonna use the chapter of wizards now. So we do get rune work from that, and that's a bit early, I think. We didn't get hit with the art gate just yet. I could just do all Zeus Thunder, but that's a bit of a waste right now. So I'm just gonna do the chapter of wizards in the front. Do rune words. And we get the Aratusa students. Okay, that's actually pretty good. That's also going to kill the Nagofar's crew there, which is also good. That brings our Banard student to three. And two Patience Engines on the board. And we get three damage on Rafid's Vengeance there. Yep, yeah, okay, fair enough. Whew. Okay. There's not much point in, I think, banishing at the moment. I'm going to put down the Aratusa... Adapt. That's actually another good idea to check this now. If I play another Aratusa Adapt and then use Chapter of Wizards, this is going to play a Banard student, which was the last one on that row, or another Aratusa Adapt. Because it shouldn't do an Adapt, right? But it is an Adapt. Yeah. Okay. So that's four points at the end of every turn because the Patience Engines are going. And if our opponent now passes, I can actually pass as well. And push. Although I do want another turn of patience. At least one more turn of patience, please. Please don't pass. I mean, I can play on if I want to. Because uh, I get four points, our opponent gets three, uh, one. So red riders. Fair enough. Uh, so that's going to continuously hit us. Also, Thunder is not going to be enough. But I can refresh the location again with Dwim Viandra. So refresh the location and get another Artusa. Oh no, yeah, okay. Yeah, that does it does it just doesn't work. <laughs> Fair enough. It just doesn't work as intended. Spawn a base copy of the last plate allied bronze mage on this row. Oh, or it just means that it spawns it on this row. That's probably what ha what's happening. Uh, I can pass now. And we are ahead, so that is actually fine. I shouldn't have wasted that, that refresh there, so that's a bit of an issue, but yeah, it is what it is. I'm actually going to put our opponent's uh, cards down now. I do have a pretty good hand still. I need to get rid of that chapter of wizards that I can't really do anything with anymore. Banish is probably not going to be that useful. Uh, so I'm gonna get rid of Xavier Lemons and of the Aratusa student. We still get Spellweavers. And we still have a few good cards in deck. Uh, so I'm gonna just hold off. We still have Rune Words, right? Yeah, we still have two Rune Words. We still have Letitia as well. So if we can put down Letitia and then um, resurrect some of the Patience Engines. Because they are at four and five, I think. Oh, six even. Six and four. So we did get four. So that means we get zeal on every single one of our alumni now. And that's gonna be at least two. And maybe resurrecting a few, we'll see. If I can get necromancy, uh, and maybe Gerhard of Val, and maybe some rune words, yeah. Okay, this is gonna be fine. Um, we don't need the uh, Aratusa students anymore, so I'm gonna get rid of those. And we get practice makes perfect. That could work as well. We can use on Aeromancy to get uh, Necromancy. Which sounds really weird if you say that loud like that. Uh, opponent goes first. So most likely gonna be... Um, yeah, what's his name? The Wild Hunt leader. Oh no, one power... Oh. Okay. It's fine, I guess. Let's put down the Sintry and Spellweaver. We might get a little bit of damage out of that. Yeah, we're gonna have to see. We get zeal on every single alumni. We don't have to spawn them anymore with the chapter of wizards, so that's not a problem. So the main goal is gonna be just to get the patience engines as high as possible. So we get gals, that's gonna be art gates. Oh no, Nagelfar. Nagelfar into art gate? No, there he is. Auburn, that was his name. I kind of forgot about his name there for a second. The NL Conqueror, that's gonna be eight points, because there's no frost on the field just yet. Um, then we're gonna go Letitia Charbonneau. Uh, Letitia really needs to go on here. Um, I can just put some charges on Oberon. Wanna kill Oberon as quickly as possible. 
Patience, patience. This game is all about patience. I can't use her ability now because she's moved on the other row. We get Nitral. Nitral is going to get oh, double boosted. Can I check? So the Bannard student is six. I'm going to actually use Shani to summon the Bannard student, which is at six. And then use Inspired Zeal to kill... the um the apiary and phantom immediately yeah let's do it like this and kill that one i'm gonna be able to use casting contest on top of that and we get the apiary and phantom they still have dominance so that's gonna be two damage from um the troll here they're gonna try and focus on that one okay hmm i'm in a bit of a pickle although Casting Contest on the Bannard student is going to refresh that. And I could do 6 damage now. Um, if I just kill Nitral if I want to. But I'm not going to. Because if I can boost that Bannard student higher. Then it's going to be a-okay. Ah, uh, Wildhunt Bruiser is going to move the Bannard student. That is fine. Uh, that means that I can actually just keep it boosting. Um, I really want to use Necromancy... A necromancy on that Artusa student, maybe? We'll see. Um, I'm gonna use Gerhard of L first. Although, no, no, no. I need to use also Stunder on Nitral, and then I can use that charge to kill Nitral. There we go. That's actually the better option here. Because next up, we're gonna be use, get, using Gerhard. Gerhard needs to be on the board for two turns. If he starts to take damage, I'm gonna have to swap that out. But um, yeah, there's Eredin. Which is definitely something I want to kill as well. We are at 8 damage, which is perfect. So we can now kill um, Eridan in one go with the alumni. There we go. Uh, we have another charge on the um, Sintrian Spellweaver, so that's also good. I do still have a lot of crappy bronze cards in my hand. So even though Practice Mix perf Perfect is in there... It's not going to be that useful. And that hits the alumni, which is good. Gerhard can go on the front row, I think. Yeah, just to protect. Although I don't really need to protect anything there. So Gerhard over here. Uh, that gives us another charge. So I'm just going to use those as well. So that's melee draw a card and destroy a card in your hand. So that's another 12 points. And that kills... Wait, what did I kill? Oh no, that was Shani. That was Shani. Never mind, that was Shani. I think it's probably better if I use... Because I'm not going to have a dead alumni in my deck. Or do I? Shuffle an allied bronze mage back into your deck. Yeah, let's try this. And we get lucky. Holy shit, we get lucky. Uh, so that's 10 damage. Um, 10 damage is going to go on to... Imlerith, and then kill Oberon, and then whatever the hell I want to do. I'm going to keep Gerhard for the next bit. Okay, that was actually incredibly lucky. We're definitely going to win this, um, just by the amount of points that are still in our hands. Uh, the Bannard student is still... That was their biggest problem. They, they kept this thing alive, so it's now at 13 points. I can use Gerhard to now play uh, Runeward. Uh, which we don't get. I was hoping for rune words. We don't have artifacts on the boards. And we won't be able to play uh, three more spells. So I'm going to have to be forced to play Stommelford's Tremors. Um, and then we can go with... I can actually resurrect. Yeah, I, ca I can actually do that. I'm going to do that. So Anagamancy into Necromancy. Uh, into uh, the Alumni. Which is going to be another 11 damage. And now we can just uh, kill whatever the hell we want. There we go. And then we can use the alumni again to do 12 damage. Now on that side of the board, I can yeah boost this. It doesn't really matter. And we can just kill, kill, kill whatever comes across our board. So there we go. That's even in the face of that, we managed to get um, the students very high. Especially that Bannard student was 12 at the very end. 
Um, and that's what you're looking for. You want to just have very high students, if, even if you're not using them, because I don't know if you noticed, but we didn't actually use any of the students there. We let them just learn, 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 and then the benefit from the patient's value just came from the alumni units, which is uh, yeah, definitely the strongest part of this deck. So that's it in uh, regards to example matches. As you can see, this deck basically nukes anything that isn't very, very heavy control. So I think Syndicate is one of the only factions that might easily be taking this out. But as long as your students survive for at least four turns, your opponent is basically boned in the later rounds. Because the amount of damage output or boost output you can get with the alumni is based on your uh, students. So if you can just keep one of them students alive, as you saw in the last match, just keep that student alive, even if it's not on the row that you want to want it to use the ability, actually. Um, just having it there, increasing their patient value is enough. The banner student we had at the final match was 12 power, 12 damage. It was way over the top, way more than we ever needed. But uh, it was just very cool to see all those high-powered units from our opponent just dying. Um, again, Rafford's Vengeance, very good starting play. You get so many points from this. If you just play one mage first, then play Raffid's Vengeance next to it, so you immediately get that crew ability as well when you use his ability, their ability, basically, um, with Inspired Seal by using the Order Than Bronze unit from your hand right next to it. Bam! Another two points on top of, of course, getting a Patience unit very early on on the board and drawing another card, so basically thinning out your deck as well. And if you're lucky, you can do this twice um, because Raffid's Vengeance is pretty powerful. As you saw, I made the mistake of reading this incorrectly. If you use the Order ability of Chapter of Wizards, it spawns the last played allied bronze mage regardless of row and then spawns this on this row yeah it's a bit confusing i, I don't know yeah it, 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 i'm i'm assuming i'm not the only one that read it like this that it just spawns a base copy of the last played allied bronze mage on this row in the meaning that it's the last bronze mage that was spawned on that row but yeah now i understand so now you understand as well if you uh, read it incorrectly like I did. But yeah, mistakes aside, this deck is incredible. The uh, amount of uh, points you can generate with just the alumni alone based on what your students learned is, uh, is just amazing. And I love the card art as well. It's probably one of my favorite new cards in this game. So that's why I wanted to do a, a deck guide on this first. Um, so yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you have any more tips or changes, tweaks to this deck, let me know because I'm uh, really looking forward to talking about this deck with you. Um, and yeah, let me know if this deck works out as well for you as it did for me because it is really strong. I might actually take this to pro because it's uh, it's yeah, it's just, just one of the better decks that I've played with so far. Next up, we're going to be going back into Syndicate, which is, of course, one of my favorite factions as well. We're going to be, again, the very oppressive, oppressive attacking douchebag but that's basically what syndicate is all about these days uh, we're going to be adding a lot more bounties than we did before and playing with a lot of the new cards as well so thank you enormously for watching this episode of Gwentage, and i'm hoping to see you all in the next episode of this deck guide very knowledgeable show about playing cards in a video game so uh, thank you guys enormously for watching and see you in the next one goodbye and stay nutty